to this week's Facebook Live, which is um, on this week's blog, which is a question. I posed I posed a question, um, which was, you know, can can we make our our own lives difficult? Can we basically get in our own way? And the simple answer, as I said, um, in the blog and in the description, is yeah, you know, yes we're all very capable of doing that we're absolutely um very capable of getting in our own ways um and making life as difficult as possible for our own selves i mean sometimes you know we'll blame others but sometimes it's us we're the ones that are actually in our way and and we can do that in multiple of ways and um, we can do it in a subconscious way we can self sabotage um you know we can be reactive um uh, you know, even though we know it is better for us to actually stop and think first before we respond. Um, but we're human. That's, that's who we are. And, and as humans, we all make mistakes. Um, and, you know, there, there are many times um, we all do things in our lives, in our everyday lives, that really don't help us. Um, and things that could be simplified or reduced um such as you know different forms of distractions uh keeping busy maybe we're doing that sometimes people can keep themselves busy um and and that can't be you know it, it may not be good for your mental health you might say oh i'm very busy but are you really busy or are you keeping yourself busy for not the right reasons um so as i said it can be difficult all those things can get in our way but they can also cause us problems with our mental and physical health and if we're honest with ourselves, we can actually admit this. And we can admit that if we make some changes, even small tweaks, um, it would be far better for our mental and physical health. And that's basically what we're going to talk about today. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm inviting you to change the question, to change that question. You know, can we make or can I make my life difficult? Because you know, if you're being honest, you know, yes, I can. I can get in my own way at times. So I'm asking you to change that question and then, you know, ask yourself, you know, what what can I do that would help me make life a little less difficult for me? Um, you know, how can I get out of my own way, even by a little bit, um, especially when life seems exhausting? Um, and, you know, one answer to that, as I always say, is to review what's actually going on. So, you know, what is going on in my life right now would be the question you'd ask there. So, as I always say, awareness is always our first step. When we're aware that something is going wrong, we've stepped out of denial and we can change things. Um, so, you know, questions to ask around for the awareness part of this exercise would be, you know, where am I spending my time? Where am I really spending my time? um you know am i distracting myself how am i distracting myself it's not just with social media and television we distract ourselves as i said keeping busy doing things is a form of distraction at times um you know and it keeps us exhausted as well running around after people that are perfectly capable of of looking after themselves um is is one such thing codependent Pendants can keep themselves very busy. Um, so can per, uh, perfectionists. Uh, and I've talked about all of those kind of people, bef you know, before um, in, in videos. So, you know, do go and check those videos out. When we can see the answers to these questions, then we can take some positive steps um, to, you know, reduce down the stress, reduce down the anxiety. Um, and then, of course, that leads to the next question. Well, what positive steps can I actually do that are going to help me make life a little bit less stressed, maybe less exhausting, less anxious? Um, so, you know, simplifying things is one of is one way to do it. And that's what today's video is about. It's about looking at areas, um, a few key areas that you could maybe perhaps um, simplify a few things in in your life. The first one is um you know a, a reliable everybody ha you know pulls on it and goes yeah tv social media um is the one i'm going the first one i'm going to talk about because what we're trying to do here is in fact we're trying to regain 
back control over our own lives. We're trying to empower ourselves. That's what you're trying to do when you explore questions like this. Um, so the first one, TV and social media. So most people, on average, they work, they watch about three hours of television. Now, that doesn't have, have to be three hours a night, but you could be ha and have become one with your, cu your couch and, and watch an awful lot of television. Um, we also spend about three hours on average on social media. Um, I haven't got my phone <laughs> hands to show you and um, i usually like to flash the phone when i talk about social media or tablets or your computer or whatever um but if you start to count that up that's about if you're three hours on tv and three hours on social media spread out throughout the course of the day particularly we're always picking up the phone um you know or the tablet to check the social media that's the equivalent of 42 hours a week that's a job it's a full-time job in and of itself um and it's it's one big addiction that's one big addiction that we have and it is addictive and the reason it's addictive is because it stimulates the same areas of the brain the same zones in the brain as a, as other forms of addiction and that can be really hard and why it is really hard to give it up why it's so hard to get up off the couch and go yeah i know i should go and do my walk but Oh, this show is just starting. I'll watch it. Or really should get off my phone and not use it so much. But there's always the but because it does stimulate the addictive centers in the brain. Um, and the thing is, it is a form of distraction. Both are a form of distraction. And they do give you relief. You know, you're stressed. You sit down and watch TV or you're on social media and it kind of you can feel yourself going, oh, yeah relief a little bit of relief but it's only temporary relief um from whatever it is that you're using it for and we do use we do use it as a form of distraction and as a crutch um but it's not a permanent solution and therein lies the problem it'll only ever be a temporary relief and at some point like all addictions it can actually make things worse for you um i've talked about Tele uh, I've talked about the phone and how addictive it is and how some people view it in fact the same as, of, as having an affair at this point it can be that addictive um, it isn't good for our health either um, I, you know never mind the physical health but the, the mental health aspect of it is because what happens is it they do tend to lead to us having more negative thinking so up here starts to go um you're watching things you're interacting with things on social media um whatever you're absorbing in and it can only lead to negative thinking and in turn negative behaviors then on your part um they're not going to really be good for you it's not good for your mental health so in saying that uh, as it is an addiction it can be you know giving up giving it up completely and going cold turkey is no no it, that would be very simple um, you know, be very. It, it, that that's a too simplified. Um, you know, you know, go cold turkey. That, that can be too simplified um, for most people. Um, it can be very too hard. It just makes life more complicated. You want to watch certain things. You like to watch. There's no harm in having anything like that in moderation. Um, and if you can reclaim even back a small amount of time every day. Um, from watching TV, from watching, you know, using social media, then, you know, it actually will help reduce the stress and your anxiety because they do put up your stress and your anxiety. Um, they, you know, as I said, they, they cause mental health, they can cause mental health issues with your negative thinking and that. So, you know, if, if you're reducing it down, you're going to be helping all that. Um, but we can also use the time that we reclaim back from the TV and the social media to do other things that are more positive for us. Um, you know, so a simplified way of doing it is to take something from business and use time blocking. So you can time block in your hour of whatever show you're watching. Um, but do you need to watch continual show after show after show? This is what I'm saying. You've got to explore and raise your awareness around that area of 
what you're watching what am i consuming is this actually really good for me is it pushing up my heart rate my blood pressure because shows can do that and films can do that um because our brain just doesn't know what's reality and what isn't um you know so it will elevate all that so you know so time blocking in something that you really are interested in you really want to watch it that's okay and this can be a way of clawing back some time you're not sitting for three solid hours you're just going okay i'm going to do half an hour or i'm going to do an hour and that's it that's my limit so you're setting restrictions on it and then you're going to use the time to um you know for something else and it's the same with social media you know block the notifications coming in automatically and set aside some time um, you know, over the course of the day where you say, OK, only at X time I am going to check my phone. I'm going to check, you know, my tablet. Spend time then creating more positive environment once you've clawed back some time. So positive family and friends and the key is always positive here. Um, you know, so this is helping you to cut back on those negative comparisons that are brought in from from, you know, social media interactions. You're spending time with more positive people, um, you know, get out for a short walk. You can meditate. You can do a hobby. This is your time to spend on you. You're cutting back that time. In general, what you're doing here is to try and claw back some time to do things that are more enjoyable and more positive for yourself and bring more pleasure back into your life um, rather than being caught up in something that is only feeding a negative cycle and is only giving you um, temporary. I'm not saying you cut it out completely. As I said, that can be very unrealistic for most people um, to go cold turkey and just completely cut something else. But you can cut back even by half an hour or an hour a day um, you can do that cutting back from the tv and social media and reclaim it for something more positive in your life um the next thing is to number two would be about organization um being disorganized, living with clutter, not even just clutter in your home, but clutter on your desk or in, in around you, wherever you're working, um, can be mentally and physically draining. I've talked about how, you know, mentally and physically draining it is before. It can also be a huge waste of time when you try and find something or you're trying to get over something. And I've talked about how, um, you know, physically dangerous it can be to have clutter around you um, and have disorganization around you um, but it also creates a huge amount of um, stress and our lives can be feel more difficult I mean if you think about it if you come in and the dishes are already done anybody will tell you oh the dishwasher or the dishes are already done um, you know the dishwasher is loaded you say oh I don't have to do that it can be a bit of a relief um, you know somebody else has run the hoover it can be you know a bit of a relief to come in and see that something is already done a dinner's cooked but it's the same thing about organization um you know if things are organized as a there's a place um you know you know where something is and you can get your hands on it quickly it does you know it does feel less difficult it does feel less stressful um as a result um so you know it also can help, you know, save some money, save time, save time, especially in a crisis and prevent accidents. But it also there, you know, brings back that control. We feel more in control over our lives because we're not looking at, you know, things that are disheveled or disorganized or, you know, cluttered around us. Um, so the question you have to ask yourself is, you know, what areas of my life can I, um, you know, or do need to be more organized? um you know decluttered in some ways and again that list can be quite overwhelming so we look at ways we can do this in small steps um you know we can break it down into smaller tasks maybe it's five minutes a five minute task to organize something um or you know declutter one cupboard um can make all the difference so again time blocking out even you know five minutes a day to tackle a room and then it, it could take you a week it could take you two weeks depending on what you're trying to tackle but it's done 
I've done it myself when things have gotten, you know, disorganized in the office. I've said, oh, I have to tackle it. And it preyed on my mind so much. But when I got in and did it, but I just allocated 10 minutes every evening to do it. And by the end of the week, it was back and it was organized and it was fine. And things were put in into their appropriate folders or baskets or, you know, filing cabinets and whatever else. But it was sorted and I knew where things were. It was much better for me. So, you know, it was less stress. I wasn't playing in the back of my head. I have to do this. I have to do this. And um, so, you know, set up reminders on your phone. Five minutes. And for that five minutes and set a timer and um, whatever you get done in that five minutes, it's done. That's it. You're finished. Um, you've done your done your um, task for the day. Once the area though is cleared, try and make sure that you keep it that way. That you have some sort of organization system in place. Baskets um, are a great thing. You know, um, magazine holders, particular paperwork. Um, you know, think about what you want to what you want to clear up, um, and put in a system that works for you. Um, other ways that organ being organized can help, um, you know, reminders on the phone. And, and I know most people will go, oh, well, I do that already. But it's mostly for, you know, an immediate appointment, uh, maybe somebody's birthday, maybe it's an anniversary. But think about putting on other things like payment, payment dates. So you can keep an eye on your finances, renewal dates, even put the amount of the last renewal uh, for your car insurance or your tax, put the amount you paid down on it. Maybe put the policy number with it so that you have it there. It's there and you can check on it. Um, most people don't have anything down for the 1st of January every year. So putting in a list of reminders of this is the date um, my car insurance is up. This is the date that the car tax is up, the house insurance. And put down the policy number and the, um, you know, the details, the, the uh, amount you've paid is a quick way of being able to find something that we, can't, we, we might need um, in a crisis or we might need it on, uh, at the time of renewal. Um, so important tasks or business meetings can also be popped into your phone as reminders. Um, and, you know, if you're not not in the habit of doing that, um, it, it is a simple way to get yourself organized. Um, and that way, you know, if something is coming up, you you won't forget about it for first thing. But the other thing is it takes away an awful lot of mental clutter. And again, remember, we're trying to simplify our lives get out of our way get out of our own way and to um you know claw back some um control over our lives so you're reducing the amount of information that up here has to retain um by you know having it written down either in a planner or on your on your mobile phone um you know having all the documentation as well is another way you can do it as i said you know all relevant information together so birth certificates marriages any other certificates that you need you might have qualifications copies of your qualifications as well as important um you know car and home insurance policies current tax documents passports utility uh, bill provider details your account number and that if you have that all in one folder um even scanned and put onto a folder on your tablet or your laptop it's very handy in case of a crisis. It can take time to set that up, but as you're organizing things or as something comes in, have you know a, a document tray or a little box that you can just pop it into. And when you've everything gathered, then you can just put it all in, slot it all into either um, a normal A4 folder or some sort of um, document folder uh, with a fastener on it. Um, and once it is, if you run into problems or, as I said before, if it comes up to a time of renewal for some sort of insurance, then you've, it's all there. If there's a crisis and, you know, I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but if it is, it's all there. You can lay your hands on that folder quite quickly um, and, and think about putting, you know, copies um, in, in if you have a safe, even at home, to get a safe at home and put things in a uh, you know a fireproof safe and put copies of things like that into it um again 
you're clawing back some control in your life you're reducing the mental clutter you don't have to keep it up here all the time um, and it's okay to have scanned things on most most companies now send you um, emails with the documents anyway and it's easy to just download them and pop them into um, you know into a folder on your computer or your tablet the third thing which is very important and if you are somebody who is um, as I said before people can keep themselves busy um, for the sake of being busy they're not actually busy it might sound a bit peculiar but um, I think you I think you get the gist of where I'm coming from with this you know codependent in particular perfectionist nobody else can help um, things like that uh, we can also use busyness um, to um, you, as a form of procrastination um, some people do that so number three tip number three for this is to you know we're taking back control here we're trying to simplify things down is stop attempting to multitask it can be very tempting to multitask when life feels stressed busy and difficult but basically your brain is not made to multitask and you'll go but i do it all the time yes you do but your focus is not fully on the task at hand it's on all the other tasks that you're trying to do at the same time and you know you're rushing around from one task to another you're trying to do too much too quickly it just doesn't work your focus is not there and you make mistakes we do make mistakes and that can cost your time that can cost you money um you know and it raises your stress levels and it makes life feel out of control. It makes life feel difficult. So then you've got a cycle. You're setting yourself up for another cycle. And it's a negative one. The more we make mistakes, the more we feel unsure of ourselves. And then we start to feel less confident in our abilities. And then we're likely to speak to ourselves in a more negative manner. Up here starts going. And you'll find some of those cognitive distortions are getting kicked off. You're setting yourself up for those negative cycles. Again, you'll f spin back around and your stress levels will go up and up and up and up more. Um, your anxiety um, will go up and more and more. Stop trying to multitask is the answer. Just stop trying to multitask. Slow it down a little bit. The jobs will get done. They'll still get done. The tasks that you need to do um, will get done. Try and take small breaks between different types of tasks try um you know time blocking or chunking similar tasks together it, it works very well this helps to focus you know helps with your focus it also helps with your productivity and um, it reduces your stress and your anxiety levels and you get to feel more control so if you can put together similar tasks and then time block out um as much as possible time block out um you know set time for, to do those particular tasks either each day or you know on a certain day or each week that's better that is better than trying to hop from one thing to another um and as i said please try and take some time between tasks different different tasks um because this allows your brain your brain does need to switch between different tasks it needs a few minutes to switch between different types of tasks to be more efficient and more focused on, on what you want to get done um, and the last thing I you know I would say to you number four would be stop and take a moment um, particularly when life is feeling particularly difficult if you're feeling that it's not a, you know you have no control over what's going on it's more important than ever to take some time out um, this will allow you to take some time to reflect on what you want and um, it also takes you know gives you time to to review well, what is really going on here what is happening maybe to review your priorities you know what's what's important to you um, what do I want to prioritize what can I eliminate that's important it's important to take time particularly if things are feeling off balanced and out of control that you do look and review the priorities and see where have I gone off track um, where do I need to bring it back to center and maybe eliminate and prioritize things delete 
minimize if I need to. So maybe you're minimizing contact with negative people, delegating or eliminating some tasks and um, saying no to things, saying no to more things. Um, you've already got enough on your plate. In this way, you're starting to simplify your life. If you can review those priorities, you can really start to, you know, bring yourself back to center, feel more in control and, you know, get start creating better routines for you. Um, manage your time better, your life better. Um, and, you know, it, it, it does make you more efficient, more productive as a person rather than continuing on that you know hamster wheel that feeling of being on a hamster wheel and of being out of control um i do mention in in the blog and there is a link out to meditations meditation is a way to help you you know take that use that stop and take a moment um you know even just doing a short practice every day for three minutes even a three minute breather throughout the day to kind of um i've said it i've said it before but you know slip off to the bathroom three minutes of breathing in the bathroom um, you know, de it brings down the stress levels and the anxiety levels, but it also allows your brain to kind of slow down a little bit so you can say, OK, what's going on for me here? What's happening? Why do I feel out of control all of a sudden? Why do I feel like life is too difficult? Or why is my stress levels going up, my anxiety levels? So, you know, it can help you in a very quickly, in a quick, short period of time to, you know, OK, what's really going on here for me and help me to recognize you know, how am I making life difficult for myself or is it somebody else that I need to eliminate? Or am I taking on or am I not saying no? You know, if I'm not saying no to things, am I taking on too much? Um, am I self-sabotaging? You know, I come back to that. I said that at the beginning. So it does also help you too to learn to be more relaxed and meditation can help us to take a breath before we react. And when we take a breath... Um, we're not actually reacting. We're being more proactive. And when we're proactive um, in our responses, then we are, um, you know, it's going to be more for our benefit. Um, so, you know, those, if you can look at any one of those areas, um, we can start to claw back some time. We can also, um, you know, feel more in control of our lives and thus gain more confidence back any of them can help you and will help you in gain you know gaining more control feeling more in control um and there won't be that nagging feeling you have to do this you have you know there won't be the mess that's not and the mess of declutter will nag at you um you know it's you're reducing your distractions you're simplifying things in your life you know you're going to find yourselves more focused on what is important to you that's the really what we need to do here um and in that way we're also going to be reclaiming our self-confidence but it's small steps don't try and go like take a big big step and cut out all television it's not going to work cutting all social media that's not going to work it, that's not practical you have to be think practical what small step could i take so think about something that would be a simple step for you and take it just one step um one step towards making your life about you and about your confidence and being in control and just keep taking those steps it's the consistency by by taking the small steps leads us to the bigger goals and leads us um, you know to to getting out of our own way and that's what the goal is there with with this exercise is actually to get out of our own way so i'll leave it there i know i went on for a bit longer today um but um let me know if you have any questions i'm always happy to answer questions as always and i will talk to you all um i won't talk to you all next week it's a bank holiday here in ireland um so i'm i'm taking me time this year um i haven't for the last few years so i'm taking a, taking more me time this year and um so all bank holidays are off so there won't be a blog on monday um so there won't be a facebook live next friday but there will the following week um, and i'll see you all then um, please stay safe, mind your mental health and I'll talk to you soon.